Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Oh, this is always a fun topic. Hooray! Conjuring a reptilian. Look at her. She's conjuring a reptilian. And we see uh, symbols of the Tree of Life and sacred geometry in the background. And here it comes as, you know, let me do thy bidding. Ha, 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 ha. You're going to do my bidding. You know, what's really frightening is there's so much truth in this photograph. It like hit me like a ton of bricks when you pulled this up because the reality of things is this. You're looking at it right here, right now. Oh, man, there's so much I could talk to in this. So much, so, so, so much. Just like we're saying, uh, you know, we, we look at things through a different lens today than we did a thousand years ago, 500 years ago. And yet we're still talking about the same things, even though we might perceive them in a slightly different way. Maybe we're perceiving them a little bit more accurately. And so here she is. And, you know, we see the glowing. It, it looks like this might be a star in the background or it almost looks like it might be life force between our hands at the same time. Coming from the ether, here is this reptilian being. Pretty good representation. And we go to medieval woodcuts and we see people conjuring the devil. And we see a reptilian looking being and, you know, the wings, if, if you guys that are familiar, you know that the higher level of Draco have the wings just like this. And here they are. What are they offering? Well, are they offering puppets? Uh, are they offering dolls or are they offering uh, C-H-I-L-D-S? You know, that's that's again. And Cindy was coming right out with the wording that we know from. Uh, the whole incident with Moses and the Pharaoh, let my people go, you know, and then the plague that came and struck the firstborn. And this is what Cindy's saying, firstborn, mm, you know, it's, I want to try to keep this video from getting uh, hit with a IAI, but, you know, we could see that we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and when you go back and look at the first photograph, you do see that light between her hands. And to me, that's indicative of life force. And then you look at the wood cuttings and, you know, what are they offering? You know, you know, did they did they make their own dolls or what? what is that? And this this is a rather large and difficult entity for me to look at because I know that the energy they carry um, it's very deliberate and they're very calculated and there's really not much mercy there unless they're being merciful to themselves. Yeah, and this is um, Corey uh, Good, Corey Good. I, I believe this was from uh, when he was talking um, on Gaia TV, I'm guessing. And, um, you know, how can we not simply look at this, right? Think about what we know today looking at the history and see the devil and not put that two and two together. It's obviously the same thing that we're talking about here. Um, I just think that people of a fundamentalist persuasion, they want to look at it in the biblical light and not say, okay, <clears throat> wow, you know, that's an extraterrestrial. No, no, they want to make it a fallen angel just because they want the rest of the Bible story to be true. They want Jesus to physically come back, lead an army, and to you know destroy all the evil, and then set up his kingdom. So that's why they want to look at it from that that point of view. They want you know verification for the rest of the biblical story. But again, you know the Bible is just basically it, it, it's the rehash of so many things that have gone before, but from a distorted point of view, from the point of view of those that are controlling the planet, which serve these beings <laughs> literally. And here she's invoking him, but she's invoking nothing but trouble because these beings are nothing but trouble. And so many people will say, you know, again, we hear all the time, test the spirits. Yes, we, we, we understand that because we can sense what these beings are. Uh, and this just because this, Cindy and I, it's not our first go around. And we've had <clears throat> interaction with beings all of our lives, all of our lives. And I suspect uh, my father did, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if my mother did, but I know my father did because he, he mentioned things. He was visited not only by Mother Mary, just as Mother Mary's one of our, my guides and Cindy's guides, you know, he was visited as a child by Mary. He shared that with me and he also shared with me 
um, that he knows aliens are real. There are aliens. He, he just didn't go into much detail, but he was very, very adamant. And he was actually Catholic, and yet at the same time, he believed in aliens uh, because he had direct interactions. And again, they watch certain bloodlines. They watch certain families. They know who we are before we come into the body. They know oh, this troublesome soul is going to be incarnating in Sacramento, California in 1922. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to watch this one. And, and this is exactly what they do because they, they, they can see sense in, in the fourth density, which is their home. And by the way, you know, their denizen, their home, their lair is the lower fourth density, which, you know, many of us have one foot in right now. Mm -hmm. And, and think about it. What, what is it that keeps us protected? Um, information is light. Light is information and knowledge. And the more we soak ourselves with knowledge and light, the more we can keep ourselves from falling victim to these entities who basically come right out and they have a deeper understanding of the ether. They understand how to get the food that they use, the louche that they use out of, out of fear. Um, one of the things I've noticed in, in the Bible is they really don't want you going around getting information from other sources. And to me, that's just blatantly saying, you know, we don't want you to protect yourself because if you only go by what's in that book, you're, you're going to, you're going to be in trouble and things are going to get hard and you're not going <clears> to <throat> understand why. Yeah, absolutely. But yet, you know, there, there is so much truth in, in it too. But yeah, it's, it's so distorted that you have to really know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And we can, and I'm feeling like a whole series coming on. I'm feeling like I don't want to leave the table today because I, I mean, I feel a whole series of things to, to go in deeper on and to explain, you know, as a kid, I was drawn to all this from a curiosity standpoint and I knew there was a lot of truth in this. There's a lot of truth. Yet, as we're saying, these beings, they're dark. Now, John D., as we were talking about, getting the Anakian um, information, the Anakian magic, uh, again, everything is, is so distorted. It, did it come from Enoch? Did it come from really angels? No, it came from these guys. It came from these guys. This, the, uh, you know, he 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 brought in something that can be very dangerous as well as powerful. But we want to steer clear of any interactions with these beings. That's true. But that doesn't mean that we want to steer clear of interactions with benevolent beings. And so, if you throw the baby out with the bathwater and you're and you're not contacting benevolent beings for their help to fight against these beings. Uh, then often if you are a light in the darkness, you're going to find yourself attacked and you're going to find yourself attacked. And I don't care you know, how good a warrior you are. It's most definitely easier to find fight off a band of bandits. If you have a band of friends around you that are also helping you fight, it makes it way easier. And, you know, we have many guides that work with us. And, you know, what would you say the number of guides that are typically working with us is now oh my gosh between the two of us way over 50 now yeah yeah so that's a lot of beings helping and we do get attacked all the time but you know we're able to push back and and we're also more connected to our higher selves which many people are starting to build that connection to or and then there are others that have a strong connection to the, your higher self because your higher self resides on a density that's above these guys and the more we can pull down that energy and that knowledge, the more they won't be able to really get a grip of us. They won't be able to hold on to us. They could irritate us. They could be, you know, they like to think of themselves as so superior, but yet, you know, they can be just a nuisance. Uh, you know, like a couple of flies in a room that you have to get rid of. And boy, that's an interesting story, too, with the insects, you know, Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. Yes, there is some truth into that. And we'll go into that in a different uh, video. But when we see this and we see this, we're talking about the same thing. We, we really are talking about the same thing. So are there lizards uh, amongst us? Okay. And this is, uh, you know who, giving her a little press, uh, press <laughs> briefing. And, you know, not, not to pick on her, but then again, when, when you look at 
takes a vote um, on title when you when you look at the power structure on the planet we know we know that these people who they're serving basically they think because again you know, often it's it's humans that do the conjuring humans may do the conjuring but who's really being manipulated Is that just a nervous habit? It could be. Yeah, it's just a nervous habit. Some some were saying here, I just thought it was 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 funny um, that there there was somebody that made a comment about she's going to be catching flies pretty soon. And so it's fascinating to see reptilian beings emerge during a government-funded psychedelic study. Yep. Mankind has chronicled reptilian beings all throughout history from every corner of the globe. That's a fact. So, I mean, again, if you're just looking at the B-I-B-L-E, you have your head in the sand because you're not seeing the whole picture. Archaeologists unearthed 7,000-year-old humanoid lizard statues in Mesopotamia. Vedic scriptures depict the Naga as shape-shifting serpentine breed. Zulu shamans believe the world is controlled by Chitari, a sinister Saurian force. Ancient Sumerians wrote about a powerful manipulative, manipulative group of extraterrestrials called the Anunnaki. Indigenous South American tribes worship the snake god Quetzalcoatl. Now, it, it's interesting, too, um, in that they're not all the same. You can't lump them all into the same. There's distinctive beings here. More than one. They're, again, we, 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 we tend to do a disservice when we just lump everything into one category. In Asia, ruling emperors descended from dragon bloodlines. Mm -hmm. Most skeptics dismiss these stories as mere mythology and cultural lore. However, one group of scientists discovered evidence that our ancestors witnessed legitimate lacerted, lacertids. Stranger yet, they concluded the enigmatic species continues to exist in modern times. A five-year study on DMT revealed a consistent experience among users. In 1990, groundbreaking research began at the University of New Mexico. Federal government funding had been allocated to investigate DMT, the most powerful psychedelic on planet Earth, also known as the spirit molecule. It's naturally occurring chemical compound that can be found in both plants and animals. Rick Straussman, a highly respected medical doctor, associate professor of psychology, conducted the clinical trials. He administered over 400 injections to 60 diverse text, test subjects. What was disclosed during the five-year project would permanently alter his perception of reality. Voluntary candidates underwent rigorous vetting process. Each received full psychological evaluations to ensure they were sound mind. No underlying mental illness. Upon completion of the initial screenings, physicians performed detailed physical examinations. Laboratory tests and EKGs verified who possessed optimal physical health. And initially, a large number of prospects were whittled down to a final group, carefully selected examinees, age, gender, ethnicity, occupation, religious beliefs varied widely. To remove external influences and maintain environmental control, participants did not have any contact or communication with one another. Sessions took place in a clinical hospital session, a setting. Medical staff injected it I, you know, during, uh, via IV. And doses varied with each session. Researchers wanted the unsuspecting recipients to avoid developing any preconceived expectations. Nurses closely monitored the patient's vitals, including temperature, heart rate, and blood pressure. During certain experiments, pupil dilation was also measured 20 minutes after receiving the infusion. Dr. Strassman questioned them about their experiences. Residents were asked what they felt, heard, tasted, smelled, and observed. A startling revelation soon surfaced. More than half of the volunteers described encountering nearly identical reptilian entities. Interesting, is it not? Remarkable similarities consistently occurred in first-hand reports from the experiencers. Once the DMT takes effect, colorful kaleidoscope mandalas shift into focus and overwhelming vibrational sound surrounds them. The, it continuously intensifies until the user is ejected from their body and catapulted into another realm. 
Suddenly they are inside a room filled with bizarre apparatuses. Reptilian creatures swiftly appear as if awaiting the person's arrival. Other subservient non-human visitors are frequent, frequently present, including massive mantises, robotic androids, and gray aliens. The reptoids converse telepathically while executing various tests. Psychonauts are crippled by a sensation of profound dread. Here are some of the statements gathered from the program's investigative team regarding observers' exposure to reptilians. Instill intense feelings of fear, cold and indifferent, extremely intelligent, quick-witted, focus on technical work, have an agenda, large eyes, tough skin, web feet, sharp claws. For half a decade, data derived from the experiment was collected. Scientists gathered hundreds of testimonies, which indicate a clear connection between DMT trips and ectothermic assailants. Consumers from different locations, backgrounds, and spiritual paths all shared eerily parallel testimonies. Analyzers hypothesized that what could cause this phenomenon what could cause the phenomenon we're, we're left with more questions than answers some theorize the mind-altering substance opens a portal to another dimension others argue it activates previously dormant regions of the brain allowing individuals to transcend former limitations physicists currently estimate humans can only see a minuscule 0.005 percent of the spectrum of visible light Diverse life forms may exist just beyond the confinement of our five senses. Perhaps DMT removes the metaphoric blinders and reveals what has been there all along. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, all of these things are so interesting because they were done in a scientific box where they were measuring information at only the, the 3D level. But you can see here clearly humans can make it past this 3d understanding and see into other dimensions and as we evolve and as we heal we too are going to be able to see and perceive in these other dimensions and i think moving forward with the way things are it is better if you can at least develop some uh per perception of things but you always want to be like secure and healed before you really start going in to develop these these abilities because you, you need a solid foundation wherever you're at so that's real important i want to stress that absolutely and it's it's just so fascinating and, and there's one thing that you know we keep talking about i keep bringing up and part of it is is also um just simply because of um personal experiences and many people have personal experiences and then you might talk to somebody about it and then they're not going to believe you and i feel that's one of the things that's separating us now even brothers and sisters and um you know family um somebody understands and perceives these other dimensions and no one believes them because they're just sort of stuck there in the in the 3d yeah i in the desert i had an experience like what they're talking about and um when I looked up at the night sky, instead of just seeing the stars, I saw it like this. And it hit me. It, it looked exactly like this. It, to the right, really, is what I, I saw. Uh, that's more the shading. It, every single star was connected. Every star was connected. There was this gigantic web out there. And it just made me uh, laugh kind of with joy. And, and at the same time, feel like relief and... The feeling that you know this is er that everything is okay it, it's all part of one big huge experience that we we don't really have to fear and it was a sense of connectedness that i felt i didn't sense any r reptilians or anything like that i have in other times and in you know that same location i had previously but but not on you know not having that type of experience at that time for me, it was all absolutely just totally positive, and I just saw the connectivity of everything behind this illusion of separateness. Mm -hmm. I know, and that's that's the one thing that we are working on these days is um, taking that illusion and understanding it for just that. It is an illusion, albeit it's a very important one because it does mold your soul. 
uh, it does change you and these energies in our body that experience some of these things on the outside of us can affect our our 3d energy body or our our energy body so that's why we want to always be healing always be working on ourselves to keep ourselves grounded and centered so that those blocks or those traumas cannot be manipulated by entities in different other dimensions absolutely so you know you'll have people say well i don't believe anything that comes out of um Zechariah sitchin he's a 33rd degree mason well just look at every other corner of the globe here you see bizarre st soapstone carvings sierra Le sierra leone west africa legends from this region refer to a sinister draconian force that controls the planet that certainly looks a little reptilian huh mm -hmm. And that's not coming from Zechariah Sitchin. This is thousands of years old. This is the thing. People will try to dismiss something by just calling one person out and saying, you know, this guy's a disinfo uh, informant. Uh, but the reality is this is all over the globe, all over the globe. It, it's not isolated. These figures over here, these are the Namoli figures. These are in Sierra Leone like we're talking about. These are dated anywhere from 2,500 years ago to even as far back as 17,000 BC. And they show, you know, strange creatures, strange hybrids. Hybrids abound in mythology. All all the mythology everywhere. People of Africa also have memories of giants who once lived on Earth. African legends describe these powerful beings as courageous and very strong men with shining eyes. I've referred to the ancient shining ones and why why the shining ones again as we go farther back then we're heading through this 4d and we're heading up into 5d and that's where the benevolent ones uh, are and that's when they were with us now you know we we've had this descent so to speak and there are many quote unquote um Descend, descended angels, angels that have come down just simply to help humanity rise back up. And of course, the power structure on Earth, which is controlled by the Draco reptilians, which uses, you know, the Anunnaki, it uses the Gigi, it uses the Greys, it uses captured Pleiadians um, of a lower density to carry out their agendas. Ultimately, they're still servants under the AI dragon energy. Of course, they're going to want to make you th fear the ones that are coming to help you. Mm -hmm. It's only obvious. It's only logical. They control the narrative. If they've controlled the narrative for thousands of years and are constantly trying to erase things that give you real info on what's going on, it's only logical that the big mainstream views of things would be theirs. It's their control grid. How, how obvious? It should be so obvious to people that, yeah, okay, I, I can't believe MSNBC. I can't believe number 46. I can't believe Jen P. Saki. I, I, I can't believe Dr. Sicklemaker. I can't believe Gil Bates. But you do believe what all every single president puts their hand on when swearing into office and they don't burn up on fire? That's their version. That's their version of the story. Same thing when we when we look to... Um, the Koran, it's, it's again another version of their story and, and they are always manipulating, always. This is what they do. Now, what's fascinating of this too is that this, when they found this, they found a small metal ball inside a hollow space, a metal sphere, a metal sphere at a time when nobody should have been able to produce metal like that. It's about 4,000 years old. This just shows you that things are not as they look. As we see all these statues of different beings, they're just trying to express what they saw. You know, and what they saw would have made our jaws drop. But this is when, when Cindy goes back and she looks at, say, you know, the Atlantean civilization there's all sorts of beings walking the planet it, it it's more like a star wars situation when you walk into the cantina in star wars yeah so i mean it, it's something that you might see almost on a daily basis these different entities um working together and this <clears throat> this is what we see on the stones this is what we see carved in stones are these people 
bringing forth their understanding and things that they see on a regular on a regular basis yeah and you know here we see subterranean reptilians killed 15 coal miners declassified document reveals shocking intelligence well if you listen to the Cherokee, and I know uh, Raven, who uh, watches almost every video that we put out, Raven's uh, of Cherokee descent, and he's over in North Carolina. You know, he'll share with you the fact that you know his, and he's he's still on reservation. You know, these are the stories that they're told as kids. You want to avoid these beings. <laughs> these beings really are horrible, and they are very very real there are beings that live inside the planet there are beings that are just you know they might be walking right through you right now they're just on a slightly different vibrational frequency than us and so you know this was a declassified document in 2008 an intriguing file was declassified by british ministry of defense titled unidentified flying objects correspondent correspondence the report contains detailed information regarding ufology buried within the 318 uh, page document is a lengthy chapter labeled mystery of iniquity and exposed the reality of the serpent race and the subterranean origins of ufos oh yeah a lot of the ufos definitely come from inner earth and i've witnessed them when i was out in the caribbean i've witnessed them especially by the Bahamas, you know, which is, again, part of that quote-unquote Bermuda Triangle area. I, I've seen uh, with other friends UFOs go into the water and then come up and out of the water. And then it gets into um, hostile subterranean lizard people that had technology and appeared like they were not of this world. But these people, um, you know, they actually got attacked and, and they found corpses and this is not the first time. These things get covered up, though. I'll have all the uh, links for you guys. You could go dig in, as you can see, you know, Ministry of Defense, different dates on it, and finally being declassified, again, 40 years after it happens. But, but hey, we're used to that, right? When were they going to release the info about the thing with the plague upon the land, like 55 years and then 75 years? And we have the kappa. The kappa is an interesting being. Mm -hmm. They live in some bodies of water. This is a Japanese legendary being that would lure people away in order to have a meal. Mm -hmm. You know, again, this is over in Japan. This is worldwide. These stories are worldwide. Story behind the reptilian statue at Horiuji Nara Temple in Japan. Look at this statue. This statue went missing in 2017. It's wearing clothing. This is a reptilian being in a statue. It looks like it's wearing clothing. Mm -hmm. I know, and that looks almost like a chest piece, like it's um, it is some kind of technology, perhaps, for sitting right there on the jacket. Yeah, and you know, th this went missing. I, I I wonder why. I wonder why. You know, and we found statues like now. This is in Japan. And of course, we we found them all over um, Mesopotamia. We we found them in Mesoamerica. We we find them everywhere. We find them everywhere. It's because these people have the same legends. This is not just relying on uh, the stories of the Anunnaki and Zechariah Sitchin. No, no, no. This is global. Every freaking corner of the earth. Every corner. As we see, you know, all these. Now, this is uh, Father Crespi's collection. Father Car Carlos Crespi. He was a Salesian monk who lived in Ecuador. Ecuador is interesting. Peru is fascinating. Peru is definitely one of those doorways into the inner earth. And we see some of the things he had collected. Interesting stuff he found. And there's, again, you know, some of these interesting beings that we see over in Sumeria, the identical beings. Do you think that's coincidence? How about the Ubaid lizardmen figu figurines with little baby Lizzie's? Aww. Little baby reptilians. Adorable. Sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is everywhere we look. And these, these fall from 5500 to 4000 BC. Uh-huh. Oh, it, it's nothing. It's all just uh, the ranting and ravings of, of Zechariah Sitchin. You know, it's just all a conspiracy, I tell you. 
Oh, it's a conspiracy. No, this is obvious. This is a reality. And it's just the fact that people, a lot of people can't, <coughs> can't handle the truth. Can you handle the truth? Well, the truth is we're not alone. And, you know, not every being that's, that's around us is benevolent. You know, it, 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 it's true. There's so many people who absolutely cannot face that there could be something other than what they grew up learning, that there might be something other than that going on. Um, I, I've actually heard of people saying that, you know, you might be right, it, but it's too much effort for me to go back and relearn everything. And personally, I would rather stand on the solid truth of understanding and live my life um, with with these knowings that's that's just me but some people really they just can't face it uh they're not ready and that happens these are seven thousand years old seven thousand years old these are very ancient and again you know it, it's all part of it's all right there this is the reality you know david ike uh he was way ahead of his time and more and more people are catching on uh, as to the reality of what's going on and you know who who really does our government serve who really does our government serve well perhaps they've <laughs> perhaps they've made a deal with the devil as always, guys, make sure you are subscribed to both channels, EE Arts and Evolutionary. Thank you for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi. We couldn't do it without you guys. And do check out Medicinal Foods. Link on every video. Use coupon code EEA. Get a discount. Detoxify. Boost your immune system. As always, be prepared. Share your thoughts. We love hearing them. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste. <laughs>